May it be a light for you in dark places when all other lights go out. Hey guys, DCHL Devin here. This is DCHL Walker. And welcome to another episode of A Light in the Dark. And uh, for those of you who don't know, this is our question and answer session where uh, me and Walker answer the questions in the comments section below. Um, a lot of you guys know we haven't uh, been doing these as often. Actually, a lot of our videos, it's because we're coming up so close to Nova and we're running like two events a weekend. So uh, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check out the website. Uh, it's All those events will also be played at Nova Open, uh, Helm's Deep and uh, Last Alliance and all these really great scenarios. Eleanor Fields. Yeah, yeah. They, they've been a lot of fun. So far, uh, last weekend, Helm's Deep was uh, taken by evil before the Raw Forces uh, yeah. arrived. So they were managed... So it was pretty cool. Actually. And if you guys want to see our updates on that, definitely like our Facebook page, um, and uh, you'll you'll get the pictures. We have tons of pictures. So anyway, uh, we actually have a ton of questions though due to our latency on this. So uh, let's right hip right into it. Uh, first one, we're gonna do one that we actually missed in our last video, and it's from Akathon Thirty Nine, and he's like, uh, he says, I sort of missed you guys, but it's nice to know you're back. What do you think of this 700 point list for the GBHL redesolation of Stockport? Uh, cough, cough, advertisement. <laughs> <laughs> you two, uh, your two uh, most expensive models have to add up to 250 points. Wow, so, uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that is actually kind of cool. So I guess it restricts things like Smaug or Balrogs and craziness. So uh, 700 points, here it is. Now he has Dane Ironfoot. 125-point uh, version, uh, leading two, uh, five Kaze Guard and three Iron Guard. He has a King's Champion, uh, plus his two Heralds, uh, mm -hmm. leading five Kaze Guard, and then there's two Iron Guard along with them, plus uh, one Vault Warden, which is a single dude. Uh, then he's got Thorn Oak and Shield uh, with Orcrist on a Pony. Nice to see him on a Pony. You don't see that very often. Woo! Go Pony! <laughs> he's leading 12 Erebor Warriors with Spear and Shield. Makes sense. In total, it's 34 um, and 18 to break. All right. Well, you're kind of in luck because most of the Dwarven heroes are actually pretty cheap. So it says here your two most expensive heroes must be uh, uh, 250 points. I think you mean no more than 250 points, right? Or they add up to 250 points. Ah, uh, okay. So, so it has you, to... You could have one like... They literally 200. have to be at 250. You could have one be 200 and one be 50 or... Okay. Two of my and that's what I read from this. But anyways, he has that, so that's easy. All right. Well, while we review, I'll keep up the list on the uh, screen here. Um, so we have, uh, honestly, what looks like, it seems like obviously you're going to combine it up. It looks like uh, the Airborne Warriors are going to support behind the Khazad Guard. Khazad Guard providing bodyguard, easy uh, to uh, engage the enemy. Yep. Uh, defense 7 is hard to uh, pierce. Yep. And uh, even then, you still have the rear uh, that also has defense 7. <laughs> yeah. So, oh um, god, hate fighting doors. Takes forever. <laughs> pretty much, you, you're gonna be uh, look. Even still, though, I mean, he's got. Now, I don't really know what this one Vault Warden team is. It looks like he just kind of had some spare points. That might be good for like throwing at the monstrous creatures and things like that. Um, uh, no, that's... monstrous creatures will pick them up and rend them. Uh, monsters beat through Vault Warden team pretty easily, uh, mostly because of the fact that they can just rend or just throw it against so. the character. Yeah, I would throw them against characters more often. Mostly in a situation where they're going to call a heroic fight, you have to toss them in with that hero because then the hero is very unlikely to kill him. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, so you got the heralds uh, giving you banner support. He's got some pretty strong heroes. All his heroes are powerhouses. I mean, this is a pretty solid list. Um, your numbers are not bad for doors, considering that you're extremely hard to kill. So now you just got to add Malbeth and. Um, really make your opponent hate life. No. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Malbeth gives your, all your army a 5-up save. Yeah. That yes. Be, that's, yes. That's, that's, <laughs> so, which is just wrong. Um, I mean, yeah, no, honestly, I love this list. Yeah, I think it's a, a fantastic list. I mean, is there, the Iron Guard look like flanking units that you use. Yeah, um, they're just harassment or to protect the flanks. Yeah. So they got the thrown weapons to just get some range in You might be like... Uh, using the uh, Thor and Oak and Shield and stuff as like for heroic fights and stuff like that. I mean, honestly, you have a real serious powerhouse of a list. 
This is really one that's kind of hard to improve on. Not to say it's perfect necessarily, but you cover all the real right areas. I mean, this is a pretty strong the, one. The only thing is the magic would shut them down, some of the characters, but I mean, you, that's normal yeah. though. That's normal. But the thing is, you have so many characters that even if the opponent carries a Nazgul or something like that, he'd have so many targets to deal with. Yeah. And um, so I, I'd actually commend you on your uh, display of that. Uh, I would have said, hey, you have no archery, but you do have technically five shots. Um, <laughs> Woohoo! Hard guard can throw. Take, take down those mummocks. Man, what do you think of this list? I hate to end something saying, oh, it's great. <laughs> like, um, it's good. I mean, it's, a, it's a solid dwarf list. You can't go wrong with it. I, I like it. Yeah, I don't. I honestly don't have too much to add to this thing. Um, Okay. Let's move yeah, on. I'm gonna have good to job, man. <laughs> Dude, yeah, this is actually a list I would absolutely build. So um, it's real tough to add to it. If uh, you're wondering if it's, I guess we've talked about its strengths to death. Uh, the only weaknesses I could say, if I really, really have to think of a weakness here, um, and the fact that I have to think this hard is actually pretty good. <laughs> It's it's actually a pre it's pretty solid. It's a solid. Uh, yeah, it's been real hard to think of a weakness on that. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone. I think you have everything, an answer for every single problem that you could possibly face. So um, well, let's go ahead and go on to the next question here. Uh, Tim Robin he says, uh, so we just discovered after playing Hobbit for like two years that the highest fight in combat on everybody, uh, that you take the highest fight in a combat on everybody. So that if a hero uses a heroic, uh, I'm sorry, heroic strike, he increases the fight value of everyone in that fight. Is this true? Do you guys use it, or did we just misunderstand the rule book? You're, you're right, technically. Yeah. It raises, yeah. so heroic, just remember, heroic strike only raises the hero's fight. But what he's saying is yeah, that... Yeah, 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 yeah. But just keep that in mind, because if you have another character that actually had a higher fight to begin with, it doesn't raise, so say like you had Legolas and Gilgalad, right? But you heroic striked with Legolas, and Legolas only rolls a two, that's still, you know, have the highest fight is nine with Gilgalad. Yeah, so, no. just, just to clarify that. So, yeah, basically, yes, you're absolutely right. They all take the highest fight. This is actually a, how you defeat monsters. Mm -hmm. Heroic Strike is meant to defeat monsters for that reason, because uh, you, you just surround them up, and then everybody's fight ten when you use a Heroic Strike. Just beat them back. So... It sound, it may, if it sounds weird to you, it really is more reflective of the fact that um, your hero is so good, or that guy with the higher fight is so good, that he's really keeping that person off balance, and hence benefiting everyone else who's fighting with you. Yeah. So, um, but yes, that's true. And so, it is a big game changer, <laughs> as you probably have seen. Uh, so... Uh, next uh, question is from Akathon39. Uh, he says, also, from the books, and movies, and game, who's your favorite chapter, uh, I'm sorry, what's your favorite chapter from Hobbit and Lord of the Rings? The favorite chapter? Huh? So he's including everything in this. Um, so that's actually a different answer almost depending on what you're talking about really because yeah. uh, my you just take your favorite so like Pelinor Fields the entire Pelinor Field sequence favorite from the movie I mean that's a beautiful scene and the constant shifting of back and forth of emotion and everything like that but when you read it in the book it's it's really not as big a deal like it, it's just kind of glossed over almost um, it, it doesn't have that same impact to me uh, I think some other parts in the books are a little bit more powerful. And then if I was to talk about a game, well, in the case of a video game, once again, action sequences tend to take precedence. In a movie, you can get a lot of emotionality out of, you know, even dialogue, but in a game, it's all action. So if I had to say a game, I mean, honestly, I want to pick Shadow of Mordor, but nothing about Shadow of Mordor is canon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what do you so? choose it? All right, yeah, I, I mean, in Shadow of Mordor, I love Shadow of Mordor stuff. I mean... Um, I, if you if you really just pick a game, I, I really didn't think the Lord of the Rings games were that great, except for Battle for Middle Earth. Awesome game. In which case, that's all battles though. So of course, my favorite scene is uh, battle. Yeah, the battles. <laughs> so. so out of the movies for me, the Battle of the Five Armies still like I kind of want to do an army like this just because it's cool. Mm -hmm. It's when the dwarves are doing their shield wall, getting ready for the orcs to come in and attack them when they get ambushed. And all of a sudden, the uh, Mirkwood elves just 
run, step on top of them and jump over because they are like, yeah, you doors suck. We're going to go into the fight first. <laughs> Despite being probably the worst tactic in military history. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you should have stayed behind the shield wall. But hey, you know, it was really cool. That was one of my favorite parts. Um, what about I, the book? Dude, I haven't read the book in years. I try like the, the similar alien stuff sticks out to my mind a little bit more sure, than right. the the uh, uh, so reading about the Black Numenorians actually. I really like how the Black Numenorians came into being and like how they were corrupted and went to the Sauron side and mm -hmm. how they just kind of like hey yeah, screw you Numenorians we're we're on the right side <laughs> we want to go to the Undying Lands. <laughs> Like, elves don't deserve this. So, yeah, I really like that. Like, flipping around in the book in the Silmarillion series, you don't read it from cover to cover. You kind of just flip and then just read about the cool stuff. Balrogs were really... Like, the original fights. Like, the old, old fights where it was, like, all these Gandalfs versus all these Balrogs fighting each other. I don't even know anything pretty about epic. the Silmarillion very much. Um, yeah, so he's got me on those. Uh, so, that, that was, those were my favorite parts, I think. Um, so just imagine armies of Balrogs, dragons, like orcs were there, but they weren't that significant because they were like the pitiful line troopers that would just die in droves. And then these ancient, ancient elves. So imagine everyone like Gilgalad. Mm. Every elf is like Gilgalad and has magic and they're casting spells across the. Well, that's something I guess for a movie. But it's pretty awesome. I would I would mind seeing like you know an awesome fight scene like that. It would be really cool. Well, I guess we'll go on from uh, that one. Uh, we actually have another one from Agathon39, our next question. He likes and, us. Uh, yes, he does. However, it seems that we have missed him because he says, I suspect you guys have missed me only because I haven't heard you read out my comments in a few weeks. Yeah. Yeah, you were the one we didn't read out last week. <laughs> yes, yeah, no one, yeah. So anyone who knew, we, yeah. That we're, was, we're catching up this week for you, man. Well, this one shows a lot of love on you because we've hit you on the three <laughs> questions. Um, though I think I'm going to actually still answer your comments question about your list because I really want to find something for you. It's a very, very solid list. But you ask, uh, this episode's question though, what's your favorite point scenario to play in a tournament? Uh, for me, I like domination actually. Domination is, if I had to choose one, that's a lot of fun. Domination is, uh, I'd say, is one of the ones that makes tournaments fair. Um, for me, I would have to say uh, one of two. I really like Relic for some reason. Um, it's because it's challenging. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think it's just very unique uh, in the way it is. Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of Relic, which is kind of unusual because despite me making the scenarios, I didn't put Relic in Nova this year as far as the GT is concerned. And there's some reasoning for that. Um, That's because Smog could just go and pick it up and fly off the battle. Yeah. We <laughs> actually over. know for a fact that Smaug will show up in these tournaments. We wanted to make it sort of impossible for Smaug to win, where it's just like, okay, if you bring him, it's really just for fun. Now, yeah. we even have a measure against that. Okay, Smaug's going to show up. How do we bracket him? But... You know, don't worry about that. For you guys who want to show up and win the Staff of Power or all that other good stuff, um, you, you you don't really have to worry too much about Smaug, but uh, mostly because of that reason. But anyway, the other one, uh, and I'll just hit it real fast, To the Death. I really like To the Death. To the Death is so I know, everybody does To the Death. In fact, whenever you say, hey, let's play a game, it's To the Death. I, I have to admit it is my go-to scenario. Well, yeah, because um, it's the easiest one to set up for, but it's just boring. <laughs> It is the one that we always do. So, but yeah, I mean, Relic then. I guess I'll go ahead and uh, go for that one. Sounds good. Next question. So, uh, <laughs> Matt C. Lot BR, <laughs> Lord of the Brown Ring. <laughs> he says, uh, Lord of the Brown Ring here. Clint Whitney and I were joking uh, about he having a name and me a tag. Uh, I'm Matt, and at this point, I suppose it's too late. But it's a good idea for me not to know, uh, to be known only, uh, by a form name only. Haha, <laughs> see you soon, gents. Uh, sorry, I kind of butchered that question I, the way it was written. But, um, so, yeah, I guess. So, I had this problem, too. So, I use, I use a call sign online. So, uh, I'm Hoss001, right, is what I use. 
And there's actually uh, another guy at the store that plays, and his last name's Walker, and he actually uses that as his name. And he's actually posted it on some forums, and people have been talking to him as they're thinking that it's DCHL Walker. Really? Me. Yeah. Yeah, we've been talking about it. It's pretty funny. <laughs> what threat is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was on the, the One Ring. No, but the thread, like, that, that's insane. Be, all right. Yeah, yeah, they know yeah, who we an are. imposter. Do not talk to Walker <laughs> on the one I'm Hawk001 online, guys. So, and I've been using that call sign for ages. And uh, it was just funny. He was telling me about it. He's like, yeah, I think they thought I was you. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah. I was like, okay. Wow, that's actually pretty crazy. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty easy to spot. Uh, I'm just DC Hobbit League. I'm pretty boring. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, hey, why not use your real name? Um, it actually say. helps me out when I talk to you guys. So that way at Nova, I'm not like, Lord of the Brown Ring. And I'm <laughs> like, you know, it's just like, oh, by the way, some people want to know where you got that name from. That, that's actually pretty cool. It's a, it's a different name, but I will let you know it has certain connotations to it. That some people I, I, automatically. I'm sure that's <laughs> what the intent was behind yeah. his name. I think so. Yeah. Next one is from One Good Riddance. He says, will you upload another battle report before Nova? What will the schedule be from historic battles, uh, Battle of Fornost, that will be played at Nova? I'm looking forward to meeting you guys. Okay. So this first, is a great question. So first off, with the historic battles at Nova, they're come up and request. Yes. So there, we'll run them at any given time, um, and we just try to gather up enough people. Uh, most of the scenarios only need like four, yeah, four guys. Some of the bigger ones they like are. The last well, they can cater guys. up to eight. We have like eight guys playing Battle of Helm's Deep. We have the six yep. playing Pelinor. Yep. Four Nos actually had like six guys. We're looking yeah, at like having teams. ten plus for that will last the lines. Yep. Yeah. So um, the scenarios are actually written in such a way that you could actually have tons and tons of players or very few. Yeah. Um, and they're very fun. They're, they're not like the books that you've seen, uh, the scenarios that you have seen. It's meant to really capture the feel of the movies, and I think it did really well. It for did Helms. really well, because the Helm's Deep, uh, yeah. I snagged one of the other guys that was just standing around watching us play. He started playing, and now he's playing Rohan. Yeah. <laughs> I try to really capture that feel from the movies or the books, depending on. Now, if you want to play it, all you do is pretty much come up to me and say, hey, I want to play on Helm's Deep. And I'm like, cool, let's get some guys playing Helm's Deep. By not having a schedule for it, it just allows us to be really flexible. Yeah. Um, that way, if you're doing other tournaments or want to go yeah. to a specific session and mm -hmm. stuff like that, um, and we'll be there pretty late. I'm like, yeah. We're not going to probably be there until close, though. because. But, I mean, ultimately, we'll if you late. want to play on them and not play our scenarios, you can also do that. Lake Town will be just sitting around. Same with Helm's Eve, same with all of them. So if, like, uh, if you and a friend or someone you met are just like, hey, you want to, like, do a siege? Or do you want to fight in the city? Sure. And then you ask me, and I pull off the terrain, and, and then you just play. So it, it's one of the two. Um, obviously, when we run scenarios, it'll be a lot cooler, I think. Uh, there'll be a lot more balance, but you can feel free to play freely. Second question, just to hit it real fast. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, uh, battle reports, probably not. Um, <laughs> so this guy has me building, like, I have, I have buildings to build and paint. I have... Um, uh, orcs to finish yeah. painting. I have trolls to finish painting. I, uh, actually, this yeah, guy's might as well get it to him. It, for Nova, to, before Nova, he has to paint, uh, what was it? It was 108 uh, goblins. I'm almost done. Uh, I have 18 left. Yes. Uh, six mountain trolls, six cave trolls. Uh, how many hunter get, orcs now? Need, uh, so like 55, yeah, 70. He has to get done six buildings. We have to construct one more board, which is the port city of Umbar. Yeah, um, I, which this guy has no hobby yeah. skills, so. I, we have to construct the rest of Pelennor Fields. Um, and then not to mention, I have had to make 40 page guidebooks, scenario books, and stuff for you guys to read at Nova. I've had to make tearaway score yeah. sheets and you've stuff been, like that. You've been just as busy as I am. I, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing hobby stuff, he's doing like, convention pamphlets and all that you have stuff. no idea oh, how much need, work we're doing <laughs> i just still need to do the objective cards yeah uh, yeah we have the objective cards for the chaos and then i was going to do um the uh stack cards too set cards um, for, for the profiles yes. when we're doing the campaigns and stuff. I mean there are so many things I was supposed to make coins we were uh, the Chantilly mm -hmm. group wanted we're, us to make we're, coins we're yeah, we're no, it's already, yeah, yeah it's too late um, next year next year yeah. we'll, we're, we're already have a lot there's of a lot of uh, side deals oh my gosh it's insane how much we are doing that's so 
So even just to get a light in the dark video is pretty tough, let alone a bat rep, which takes us like 12 hours to edit. Not only him, I don't edit it. I just yeah. play. But yeah, yeah. He, once he's done, he's like, all right, see you, Devin. <laughs> I'm going to go home and paint some more. Can't wait to watch. <laughs> um, yeah. I'll but, watch it on YouTube later. <laughs> here's the thing. We're going to try to get as many bat reps as we can in with the GBHL. Right. So, um, and the Canadians. And yep. uh, uh, Lord of the Ring, SPG Battles, Rob is his name. And uh, probably even uh, Lord of the Brown Ring, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And hell, anyone else who wants to do one. Now, I mean, of course, it's limited based on time and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah. We will try to get. I'm, I'm aiming for at least four, and um, it should be possible. I don't see yeah, I, I think so. Uh, just depends on time and how much we drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we still have to be coherent the next day to keep working <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> so, um, actually, that's a good tactic. We should take the GBHL to the pub, get them totally smashed on Friday, and then that's how we be. Brave. And then we have that's. <laughs> Hey, they're the other handed tactics. You know, I mean, sometimes they work. All right, we're going to jump through here. Um, just as a quick note, uh, Luke Duddy says, or L Duddy, but I already know who it is, one of our DCHL members says, that sounds like a challenge walker. I think he was ch uh, saying, uh, Walker was talking about how to beat Isengard. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Luke was like, that sounds like a challenge. Oh, I can't remember if Luke's actually beat me or not. Brings up, we're going to discuss two things at the end of the video. One, the answer to our last question, which is, uh, it was uh, Treebeard and Tom Bombadil and Goldberry. We actually got a couple responses on that and then also more on Isengard and stuff. So <laughs> we actually, yeah, we have to actually go back and cover those, which we will. We will actually do that. Um, we should start doing tactic videos. I do. Um, They're the how to play videos. No, those are how to play. I'm uh, talking about true. tactics. Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, uh, you know what? I might get into there. Um, so, uh, next question from Jittery Itters, uh, I believe. And uh, he says, hey, it's Johan again. First of all, great videos. I'm a big fan of this channel. It has really helped me get back into the hobby again. My question is regarding Azog. In the rules, it's listed that he's carrying a two-handed weapon, but he also gets the bonus of always wounding on three up when attacking heroes. Does that really mean he just needs a two up to uh, due to a two-handed weapon bonus? Isn't that a bit overpowered or am I just missing something? All right, so um, the answer to that is actually no. Yeah, it's a special uh, rule. Well, yeah, exactly. And it was actually FAQ. That too. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, <laughs> so you don't do the two-handed strike with Azov. Um, with his three up with thing. His three it's up thing. always a three up to win. Yeah. So. Uh, so really, you never use the two-handed weapon against heroes. Against heroes. But remember, yeah, well, that's the thing. Against, against regular like trolls, or so trolls. yeah, regular trolls or dwarves, seven defense dwarves. He's still five down to four now. Yeah, so it's really one. Good. Yeah. So the the burly is just not men against heroes. It's men against everything else. Yep. So uh, next one, we're gonna go with uh, Dylan Marix. He says, "Who would win, Lurts with Berserkers or uh, Ugly?" Which I think he meant. Ugg luck <laughs> with uh, feral uric eye, twelve each. So um, this is actually kind of an easy one. Uh, berserkers just cost more; they're fifteen points apiece, uh, and they are higher defense and yep. higher courage. Well, courage doesn't matter in this fight, unless you're counting in broken, which case it does matter. True. Um, so yeah, so technically uh, the berserkers would win. The berserkers would just win because even if they broke first, the yeah. chances of them rolling snake eyes on all of them are. The, Ridiculously the, low. Feral Urukai literally are just an underpowered Berserker, meant yeah. to save on points. So you can get the two attack strength four that Berserkers get, but yep. it just costs less, so that way you can spam more. Yep. So yeah, I mean, if they're evened out, Berserkers win every day. Uh, alerts for Suglug, their stats are the same. Yeah, I mean, so it's just two... Really, that would almost yeah. come down to whoever rolls better. Exactly, yeah, so... Um, I mean... Because uh, you have the same amount of attacks. Yeah, because actually the, the defense wouldn't even matter because defense 5 and defense 6 against strength 4 doesn't mean anything. It's still 5. So <laughs> you're, it's literally a game of luck with relatively little skill in that one. Um, depending. I mean, obviously... Tactics. Fights and stuff. Yeah, it, there is a little bit of <laughs> tactics, but it, it's not going to... Overall, the Berserkers should technically win. It's almost the same fight, actually. It, it is. is. It it is. is. It's we're, literally we're, the same fight because the defense is missing. Yeah. yeah, so... All right, uh, let's go <laughs> into the next one. Um, one Good Ridden says, what is your opinion on the Huntsman? 
was expecting GBHL James to defend his army by commenting here. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like it. So, um, I actually covered this in my Uses for Useless Models videos. Uh, I may actually redo those. Yeah, we've time. actually found uses for some of those useless models. Yes, <laughs> like Kirkwood Spiders, we found an incredible use uh, for that. Or uh, Kyrden. Who? Oh. Yes, yeah, Kyrden, yeah. yeah, yeah. I have a use for him for him in, in a High Elf Army. So, yeah, we might actually cover that. Um, I guess just as a quick tidbit here is um, the King's Huntsman well, do you want me to go first on that? I guess, uh, but I, I have, all right, so here's what I said in my video. I don't remember their stats off the top of my head. Oh, uh, okay. Well, and for those of you who don't know, the King's Huntsman has been chastised a bit, and it's mostly because of the way his rule works. He is a 50-point uh, hero, I think. I know we can't mention the points and whatnot, but you really should know that, uh, because in my analysis of him, it's important. He's a cheap hero. So, <laughs> yeah, he's a cheap hero, but he's independent, so he can't really lead anything, which is important because he's just an archer hero that... For one, he only fails us in the way rattles on a one, That's so good. he can just fire through many, many, many targets. And number two is he regains all his might whenever he kills a hero. Ooh, nice. It is cool, but that is the reason people think he sucks. See, what happens is they read that rule and they're instantly like, "I can't kill a hero." Like you have a strong three bow, which is you know nice, but. When you're constantly firing with this hero, you might notice throughout the entire game you almost never kill him unless it's like a captain or something really stupid weak. Well, that's easy to get around. You shoot all your archers at the hero, get them down to one wound, then and then yeah, and then yeah, kill them, and, and then get all the might back, and you burn all your might to kill them. And basically, that is how that would work. Ultimately, I said that now when we look at his point cost, and we look at the point cost of let's say a banner or a war horn or something like that, it's relatively similar. So I would use him more like an assassin against those targets because the thing is, where are banners, where are horns and all those special war gear things, they're in the back. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for you to use your regular archers to get to them. Uh, what about a horse of a hero? Um, those horses, yeah, sure, 10, 15 points only, but realistically, when you kill a banner plus a, a hero's horse, he's more than well made up his value. Yeah, um, definitely. He, his in the ways don't fail at all. So Most of the time. Yeah. yeah, he only has one shot though, right? He doesn't have experts. No, no, it's a single shot. Yeah. Uh, that's all he has. Um, the coolest part is, and this is kind of arguable, is uh, if you kill Shadowfax or Asphaloth or any of those other named horses, I think they count as heroes? <laughs> no, actually, no, because they're they just named horses. <laughs> it's a hero. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, they're not yours because they're not my role. Uh, now, as of uh, White Warwick has... Yes, that would be a hero, fame. but then again, still, once again, the problem of it's kind of hard to kill. Yeah. Um, ultimately, yeah, you, you shouldn't be going after heroes. If you're going to go after a hero, it's really because they're on their last leg and you just want to get your mic back. Yeah. So yeah. that is how I would use them. And uh, James, I would more than welcome his uh, opinion on that. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, let's go to our next question. Uh, it's from Sacrilege83. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, I'm sitting on this army. Well, actually, I'm sitting on 90% of all my models because I have hardly anyone to play with, so I just collect, which is actually really unfortunate. I would say stop sitting on your army and put it on a table. Yeah. That would be the first step. We are one day going to get into... Uh, actually, here, let me pull a... <laughs> no, this is important. The, honestly, the easiest way to make a league is really to... Just go out and play. Our area started with nobody. No, that's not true. We have like two, three guys who came in on a Sunday. See? That's two, three guys. That's not nobody. All right. Well, it was like nobody. But now we like dominate the store with Hobbits. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like the last weekend, there was uh, Age of Sigmar, Age of Sigmar, Lord yeah, of Rings, Lord of Rings. A is never played. At, like maybe one game. No, usually. There's a game or two. Most of the time it's. One table of each going on, and then there's two tables yeah. of Lord of the Rings. So yeah. there's Age of Sigmar, 40k, and two tables of Lord of the Rings. So yeah, you should definitely get out and play the game because people don't play because yeah. people don't play. Yeah. So it's a um, vicious cycle, and it never makes any sense. It, We're still trying sucks. to figure it out. But so uh, anyway, back to the question. <laughs> so he says the only fiefdoms models I have painted are uh, Emer Hill. Um, it's a good guy. Two knight foot captains, a banner on foot, 12 yeah. foot knights. Yeah. So basically your standard uh, fiefdoms army. Right. He yeah. has uh, half painted or primed and shelled for the longest time, Emer Hill mounted, uh, 11 knights mounted, and the knight captain mounted, which is awesome. So dude, you have a full fiefdoms army. And then he has the king of the dead, 
nine warriors, four long with six axemen, Nangbor with six clansmen, and six men at arms and six rangers. And then there's no question, which is fine. Cool. We are happy, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, paint, that's paint some more. Yeah. That, well, the thing is, honestly, you probably have a gorgeous army. Fiefdoms is extremely rare. If you can get just one person to play Lord of the Rings with you, and you show up every weekend, I am telling you now you can make a league out of it. If yep. you just show up. At your local gaming store, yeah. People, you'll find a lot of the people that I've we've actually found are people who have models and just didn't play because they never saw anyone playing the game. Exactly, and that's it. So, um, here, hold on. Before we continue... Yeah, we'll just make this video slightly longer than normal. Uh, we'll just run through all the questions here. All right. So, uh, next one from Austin Bett, DCHL, which, yes, he is a DCHL member. So Hi, Austin. So, when you guys see him, have the Brits attack him. With, no, no, I'm just kidding. What? I'm he's just, one of our members. Why I know. Austin must defend himself because he's going to come to Nova and he has to destroy the GBHL. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, Austin, Apparently you think Austin's job. like fodder to be no. sent out first. No, Austin actually, he's getting really he's good. Really he's good. really he's good. He's getting good. very good. Yeah, yeah no, so I keep playing I look all forward to seeing uh, how you do with actually a Nova. Okay, so what's his question? Your question. Um, man, where's the love for Mirkwood Spiders? Uh, that's how I'd take down the tree beard wombo combo. Four up to hit, five up on the move, and if they hit the model, it's paralyzed. You can get two for the cost of a barrel light, and they'll go right through Will. No need to spend hundreds of points on several wing rays and sap his will. Just keep hitting him with spider silk. Now, before we continue, uh, Wabchika uh, responded. Apparently, Tibber Robin, one of our users, responded about this. He says, um, I'm the guy with Treebeard, and my friend has Goldberry and Tom. We only use the broken combo against Sauron in a to-the-death match. <laughs> it's the only way to beat Sauron, because my friend with Sauron saves all his might with uh, uh, for his final faith. So if you wound him, he can just use might if he fails the faith. So even with that combo, it takes like 30 turns to kill Sauron if you're lucky, because he only fails that final faith on a roll of one. Now here comes my second lesson to you guys. And this comes actually from our friendly Ring Wraith, uh, uh, Robert. Yep. So... He clarifies on this, all right? So first, number one, before we continue. Okay, great. Broken combo not being used by a butthead. It's a specific scenario in a very specific situation. Um, but the thing he mentions here, which is really important, is the fact that um, the person using Sauron is using might to might the ring. You can't, can't do, do this. Might does not say, hey, any role you ever use, you can up it or minus it. That is not true. Might is literally used in the situation. So page 56 in the main rule book, I can use mm -hmm. might. That's where it talks about is taking tests. This is for jump, climb, and thrown rider tests. Only those. Uh, dual roles, so the fighting roles. Shooting, uh, rolling to wound, courage, using will, and using fate. That is it. That's it. You cannot might the ring. If Sauron is burned by Smaug and then rolls a one, Sauron is dead. There is no point in saving your might for the ring. You can't do anything with it. So Sauron literally should just blow through it all. Um, so yeah, uh, actually your combo is now probably more effective after hearing this. But if you are really curious about this, look it up. Yeah, you can't just use might on anything you want. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, there's heroic actions, too, for using my Yeah. In case anybody forgot. forgot. Yeah. So, um, definitely a big thing. But, yes, I absolutely recommend uh, Goldberry, Tom Bombadil, and Treebeard against Sauron. <laughs> but beating that combo is still going to be a really tough task. Yep. Uh, let's go into our next to last one. If you have a two-handed weapon and roll a six, then a five, because uh, you, you're using it as two-handed... Can you use a might and make that a six again? Yes. Yeah. If if you're here, because <laughs> that's your role to win. Right. So therefore, in our example that we just mentioned of all the reasons you can use might, you can use it. Yep. So last question, XTS Warzone. He says, "Hey guys, another great vid, and thanks again for answering my question. First of all, on an idea of Treebeard Tom Bombadil Goldberry problem." 
Theoretically, you could use the Witch King on a Horned Fell Beast, Strength 7, with a Crown of Morgul, uh, which has three attacks, and a Morgul Blade, Instant Kill, to swoop down and kill Treebeard on the first couple of turns, huh? Uh, I don't know Treebeard's stats, though. Secondly, what do you guys think of Castellan's of Dual Door? Now, before we get into it, this late Blanc comments on his post saying, No, unfortunately, the Witch King can't because his fate... I'm sorry, because of his three fate points. However, the Dwemer Lake can help a lot with killing Treebeard because of his special rule. Yep. So I guess we'll go into that. Um, the idea... Yes, maybe over the course of two turns, uh, the fate points are going to be a problem because Tom and Goldberry both give one back. Um, you would have to beat through it. Now, Treebeard has a defense eight, which means you're going to be wounding on fives. The odds of you getting three fives in a single attack... Oh, well, I guess you get six for charging. He would knock him down. So Monsters you could matter. do yeah. it. Yeah, it, it's possible. Once you break through that last point of fate, though, then yes, Morgul Blade will end him. Uh, not a bad idea. But you have to declare when you're using the Morgul Blade, right? Yes. Yeah. So ultimately, what you're probably going to want to do is if you get the charge... Um, charge with a bunch of ring rays. Yeah, you're going to have to charge him and wear him out. So what I would do is use a spell first, if you can. Use some spells. Break him down a little bit. Uh, yes, I know Tom can bring his will back. But you're going to have to maybe sap will in the first turn. Tom and Goldberry bring back two will. Okay. Then maybe try to go for a transfix. Or if you have a second ring wraith, sap will. Then transfix. Whatever. Then charge in. If you get the charge, then you can try to go ahead and just use the Morgul Blade. And hope to God you get all five ups and stuff like that. Use all the money you can. Yeah. Because once Treebeard's down... It's done. It's done. Yeah, Goldberry. It's, it's over. Tom. Tom and Goldberry can't do anything, in which case, in that scenario, it instantly goes to your win or a stalemate at the very worst, if depending on your tournament or your event. But ultimately, the idea is we got to kill Treebeard. And yeah. yes, so it, it can work. The fate makes it tough. Yes, the Dwemer Lake makes this easier. And if you have the Dwemer Lake plus Witch King, that really does destroy this strategy because ultimately, he can't use his fate quite as easily. It'll right. burn through twice as fast. Yep. So, yeah. Any any addition to that? No. You can take more right? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, you, you can take, you take more, a royal air force. Royal air force, yes. Take them all. <laughs> um, Which, in 700 points, you can get six. Well, that's the last question. I'm just curious. Uh, what do you think of Castellans? What, what do you mean? What do you think? Of, like, he asked, what do you think of Castellans? The Castellans are the ones do you know what they that do? The, the, they make people move, right? No, those are spectres. So, Castellans. Uh, which ones are the Castellans? They're the Parallels. No. Damn. Those are bear ones. So, just so you guys know, I'll get this down. I have memorized down. the game. No, you just memorized the stats. <laughs> no, uh, so basically, um, they are fight five, strength five, defense seven, uh, two attacks. Uh, they have one wound, but they use will as fate. They have like twelve. Wounds. Oh, those guys! Yeah, they look really cool. I like them. Yeah, and they have Morgul blades, which I think is why he brings this question up. Right. We're just talking about Morgul blades. Yeah, they're the only other unit with Morgul blade, and they're cheap too. Yes. They're very cheap, dirt cheap. Um, ultimately, yeah, love them. I Great characters love Castellans. Or monster yeah. assassins and stuff. Oh, yeah, dude, I love them. There's nothing not to love about these guys. They are hard to wound, hard to kill. I mean, these guys are fantastic. Now, I have seen a very rare instance where they failed every single fate up until like maybe one or two will left. But even and, if they, and, then, and then our other wheels got in there die anyway. So it's like, yeah. ah, all right. I mean, but honestly, that rarely happens. They usually do so much more than their points really should allow them to do, which is why I'm scared that the source book updates will, like, kill that for them. But honestly, because they used to be more expensive than what they are now. Now they are dirt cheap for what they do. Uh, yeah, absolutely recommend it. Excitedly, they cannot leave troops, though. They cannot. Which so, would make them broken as hell. If they could lead troops, oh my god. Oh, and they can't stand fast. Because not because they are independent, but because they have a rule that, that says so they can't stand fast. fast. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Otherwise, yeah. absolutely love them. Yeah. So that was the models really cool. are really cool. I really like the models. The models are. Yeah. Uh, they make great ring wraith proxies. If you guys are looking to get into the game or new, absolutely use Castellans as ring wraiths. Uh, you get two in a pack for like fifteen bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty yeah. cheap. Pretty cheap. So, um, unless you got anything, Walker, that'll be it for today. I'm going to try to keep the video as short as possible. And, uh, we went a little over. It's fine. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, we'll try to get to these more often. But like I said, after Nova, you will start to see the content rolling. Yeah, back. Nova will be. So, yeah, you heard everything we're doing. So, all right, then. I will talk to you guys soon. Till next time. Later, guys. Thanks for watching.